Hey guys, I recently got a request to do a tutorial on the rig that I had set up in my uh, my walk cycle animation tutorial. So um, this is what the rig looks like, and uh, let me just show you what it is capable of quickly. So if we just have a look over here, it's um, it's a very simple rig and it can be displayed even simpler. You see here it's just very few bones that you actually work with. Um, these bones here are IK bones, so you can control the entire limb um, simply with one bone and then uh, an additional bone for pointing the knee or elbow as the case may be. And um, also, it's very easy to set up crouching, it's this sort of thing. Um, so yeah, it's a very simple rig, but it's also quite effective, and it literally takes about five minutes to set up once you know what you're doing. Okay, so let's go ahead and create this rig. So um, this is the starting file here, which you can download from a link in the description if you don't have a character that you want to test this out with. Um, so just starting off, uh, let's just have our cursor positioned at the center of the screen, um, just with Shift-C to get it there. And I just quickly want to enable screencast so that you can see what buttons I'm pressing. Might be helpful. Okay, I can see it shows up on the side there. So let's press Shift-A and go down to Armature and add in a single bone. Oops, I missed that. Single bone. Okay, now if we just go in edit mode and drag this up to just about just about there. And um, we can also go into the armature properties just on the side panel here. And we can enable X-ray so that it displays through the mesh. Now um, we're going to drag this up to the chest area here and extrude once more to the base of the neck and then you can have a neck bone if you like but I'm just going to go straight up to the head over here and from side view I will just bring this to about the center okay now I'm going to click to position my cursor about the shoulder and shift A in edit mode will just automatically add in a new bone and we can drag this out to the elbow and out once more to the hand and we'll just do the same thing with the leg down to the knee, down to the bottom of the leg, and then just out to form a foot bone. So let's just reposition this to the center of the leg, and do the same thing with the arm. Okay, now we want to set up the control IK bones that you saw in the introduction. So we're going to have them coming out of the wrist here and the ankle here. So we'll just select there and press E to extrude the bones out. Just like that. Now, um, we don't actually want these bones to be connected. So we'll select both of them, Alt P and Clear Parent. And you can see that now they are separate. And um, we can just add in a bone over here and over here. These will be our pole targets as they're called, which basically just means that um, the elbow and the knee will point towards each of these bones respectively. So we have the, the basics set up now and um, we can just go through and name all our bones quickly. So I'm going to turn on names and as you can see they've all been given default names, just bone.001 going up. Um, if we go into the bone properties, however, we can rename each of them. So this is our head, this is our chest, stomach, etc. So um, this is quite an important thing to do. Um, it's more important, obviously, on a larger rig where you have facial controls and all sorts of fancy stuff. But um, it is just generally good practice to to name all your bones. So. Just go through and do that. That's the lower arm. Oops. This is the upper leg. 
the lower leg, the foot, and we can just call this knee, elbow. This is the arm IK, and lastly, the foot IK, or rather, leg IK actually. Um, now, we also want to be able to differentiate between the left side and the right side. So what I'd like to do is just append dot L to all of these quickly. should have done that when I was naming them initially, but uh, just sort of slipped my mind. It shouldn't take too long, however. Okay, so now everything on the left-hand side has got a dot L to signify that it is on the left. And um, before we copy everything over onto the right-hand side, there's a few things we want to change. Um, on each of these bones here, um, the elbow and the IK bones, we want to turn off this deform property in the bones panel. So um, basically this means that when we apply the, the armature to the mesh, um, and these bones won't be given any weight, so basically they won't directly modify the mesh because all these bones are just going to be repositioning other bones which um, which will be transforming the mesh. So we'll just toggle this off. I think I got all of them. Right, and um, also we want to be able to just um, rotate the foot with this IK bone here just so that we can do everything we need on this leg just with a single bone. So if we select the foot and then the IK and just say Control P and keep offset, now when we rotate it, it rotates the foot with it. And also let's quickly set up the IK constraint. So the way we do this is we select the, um, the bone that we want to control the whole thing and then we select the bone with Shift uh, that we want to actually apply the the constraint to, which will be this um, this last bone in the chain for the arm. So we'll select the IK, then the arm, and then pressing Shift, Control, and C, we will select inverse kinematics. So this just brought up the add constraint with targets menu. So when we say inverse kinematics, we can go here into the bone constraints and uh, we can see that there are two bones in the arm so we want to change the chain length to two so now you can see that when we move this it is transforming both of these bones here and we want the elbow to be looking at the elbow.l so we can say pole target armature and we can select the elbow.l so now we can see if we aim this, um, we can move this and it will always track that bone. Now Alt-R and Alt-G just to clear that and we'll just do the exact same thing over here. shift Control c inverse kinematics, chain length of 2 and the pole target is the knee.l. Okay, now this is going the wrong way when we um, bring it up. So how we're going to fix that is, um, let's see, we could just play with our pole angle here. And it looks like if we just rotate this 90 degrees, that should fix it. Okay, now all that remains is to copy everything over onto the other side. So we'll go into edit mode. And uh, if we just press C, we can bring up the selection tool and we can just brush over all of these things on the left hand side. So now with everything selected, we're going to position our cursor right in the center and then press period or full stop just so that we're transforming around this point. And then shift D to duplicate, S, X, and negative one just to flip everything over onto that side. And now to automatically rename these all to .r instead of .l, we're going to go into Armature, and we're just going to say Flip Names, and you can see these have all renamed nicely for us. 
Okay, I'm going to quickly turn off the display of names because it's getting rather cluttered. And uh, we can now go ahead and apply this whole armature to the mesh. So if we just select the mesh and then select the armature and say Control P, we'll set its parent to the armature with automatic weights. So what this has done is if we um, just select a bone, anyone, and then select the mesh and control tab to go into weight painting mode. You can see here in the um, in the object data, it's given a whole bunch of vertex groups, and you can see they're named after the bones. And each of these bones now, if we click through, we can see has been assigned a weight. So red means um, it controls that area fully, and blue means it doesn't control that area at all. So if you wanted to modify this, um, if you press T, you can get some options. So you can choose subtract, and maybe you just want to take a bit off the shoulder or something like that. Another more precise way to modify it is just to go into edit mode, and um, you can select which vertex group you want to modify, and then if you just select a couple of vertices, then you can just say assign, you can choose its weight over there, and now you can see that this upper arm is now affecting the top half of the head, which is rather grotesque. So, um, yeah, we'll definitely undo that. Say remove, and uh, I didn't have the correct thing selected. Remove, and now it's all working nicely again. Okay, I'm just going to press comma so that I'm no longer rotating around the cursor. And um, I'm just going to go back out to the armature. Now, as you can see, we have got some crazy twisting going on with this arm. So all we have to do is just go into the bone constraints, and we can adjust this pole angle just like we did the, uh, the leg. And um, let's see, if we go into edit mode, we can see how it should look. And it looks to me like it is about 100 degrees off. Yeah, that's pretty much exactly correct. And this, this needs to be maybe about 70. So it doesn't obviously need to be exactly accurate, just so that it's not changing too much between edit mode and pose mode. So now if we look, um, our, our armature is actually behaving pretty much how we want it to. You know, we could go in and clean up the weight painting a bit so that it's working a little better, but um, I've shown you how to do that, so for the purposes of this tutorial, I don't think I need to go into that. Um, as you can see, if you go past the um, this target bone here, it starts to bend crazily to the side. Obviously, if you just move this out here, then you can extend its reach. Okay, so as you saw in the introduction, um, I could make the character crouch just by pulling this bone down here. And uh, the way that we set this up is we want the... Um, we want the arms and the legs to follow this bone here. So if we just select all of these, and then select this um, this uh, stomach bone last, and then say Control P, we can just parent these all to it. And now when we move this down, you can see they follow nicely. The last thing that we might want is just a bone that moves the entire character. So um, just Shift A to add in a bone. Press period to rotate around the cursor again. R and negative 90. You can just drag this out a little. And we can just call this control or whatever you want. And now we're going to parent this sort of master bone at the moment to this bone over here. Okay, so now this is this sort of effect. And to move the rest, uh, we want to make sure that the IK bones, so just these four here, as well as the target bones, all move with it as well. So we'll select all of those, select this last, Control P and keep offset, and now you can see this just moves the entire character around. Um, 
If these uh, relationship lines annoy you, like they annoy me, you can press N and just go into your, um, or is it your display options, just up here. Just toggle this down and you can see relationship lines can just be ticked off like that. Um, so the last thing that I want to show you is just how to replace some of these shapes with custom shapes. So I'm just going to go into a new layer over here and just add in a circle. Just extrude this a little bit inwards and I'm also going to add a UV sphere. Okay, now if we go here back to our armature and we just select one of these bones here, we can see that in the bone properties uh, there's an option for a custom shape and we can just choose sphere here. Let me just replace these all with sphere. And uh, if you want to adjust the size, which in this case we definitely do, we can uh, just scale this in a little bit. Let me just press comma. You just scale it in a bit and uh, then just apply the scale or just scale it in edit mode. Um, it's essentially the same thing. And uh, for this control bone here, I like to have a circle just around it like that. And the last thing before I end this video is, um, as you can see, these bones here um, don't really need to be displayed. They are performing a function in the background, but we will never actually modify these directly. So um, if you wanted to, you could just go and select all of these. And the feet bone as well, actually and you can just press M and select a bone layer to move it to and you can see they are now gone. So if you wanted to bring them back for some reason you can go uh, into the armature panel here and you can see that we've put them on this layer here so you can select that layer and if you want to see both at the same time you can shift select and then there, are, there they all are again. So I hope this video has been beneficial and um, if you have any questions just leave a comment and I'll get back to you hopefully quite soon. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching and goodbye.